Demco centrifugal separators are at work on more drilling rigs around the world than any other make, removing cuttings from drilling mud, those hard abrasive particles too small to be rejected by a shale shaker or settling tank. Together, Demco desanders and desilters remove over 95% of any solids down to 10 microns in size. Smaller beneficial solids, such as collides, clay, and bentonites, are retained in the mud system to ensure suitable wall building characteristics in the bore hole. Demco centrifugal separators are as tough as the equipment they help protect. Mud valves, slush pumps, manifolds, swivels, and drill pipe. They're precision engineered to effectively maintain and improve drilling hydraulics by reducing mud weight. They're efficient and economical, helping speed drilling rates, reducing the need for water dilution and replenishment, extending the life of drill bits. The heart of the Demco centrifugal separator is the cyclonic cone, ranging from 4-inch desilters up to 12-inch desanders. Drilling fluid under pressure is directed into the cone through this tangential inlet. Rotary movement is created when the fluid strikes the curved inner wall of the cone. This sets up a centrifugal force which separates the fluid into conical layers. The heavier particles are forced to the cone wall and moved downward by gravity. As the cone tapers, the solids gain speed and separation efficiency increases. The solids are then discharged at the bottom of the cone through this underflow outlet or apex. Meanwhile, the lighter fluid, now mostly free of solids, floats to a vortex or vacuum formed at the center of the cone and is drawn upward through an overflow outlet. Fluids are then returned to the mud system to be reused and the cycle starts again. The Demco cone is a remarkably simple thing. There are no moving parts and in this four inch style H desilter, only six basic parts make up the completely assembled cone. Maintenance and repair are limited almost entirely to occasional replacement of the protective cone liners. You'll notice here, near the bottom of the cone, these tattletale warning holes. Liner wear is more concentrated at these points. Fluid seepage allows you to visually check for liner wear without taking the cone apart. With the few exceptions we shall point out, the same basic component parts are used in all Demco desilter and desander cones. This style H cone is the one you'll find most often in the desilting operation. Its longer length increases fluid retention time, thereby increasing separation efficiency. In comparison tests with a competitor's 4-inch cone, the Demco cone processed over 60% more fluid in the same period of time. Both units were operating off the same pump, and both units removed over 90% of the solids but the Demco cone did it in less than half the time. Assembly and disassembly of the Demco cone is very simple and fast. First, remove the orifice control assembly from the cone flange by loosening these four bolts. Now, loosen the four connecting screws to remove the vortex finder and inlet assembly from the top of the cone. And finally, remove the vortex finder from the inlet section by loosening these screws. And that's it. The inlet O-ring seal should be inspected and replaced if necessary. as well as the inlet liner.
and the cone liner itself. Demco liners are available in rugged urethane, which lasts up to five times longer than our competitors' Buna N liners. Additional cost savings are realized with Demco's separate inlet and cone liners. This makes it unnecessary to replace the entire liner assembly, only that liner section that may be worn. Assembly is just the reverse of these steps. You begin by inspecting the O-ring seal at the base of the cone and replace if damaged. Next, insert the cone liner. Make sure it is firmly seated and that the top of the flange fits into the mating groove at the top of the cone. Then install the inlet liner by looping a piece of tight line around the flanged end of the nozzle liner and drawing it tight to compress the liner so that it will slip back into the inlet bore. A little grease on the exterior of the neck and the interior rounded portion of the liner will help it slide on easier. Now lubricate the inlet O-ring seal and place it in this groove at the top of the inlet section. This sealing procedure is somewhat different on the other four inch cones, so be sure and check your assembly instructions at this point when working on the other cones. The next step is to push the vortex finder through the mating hole in the inlet section and inlet liner. A little grease on the vortex finder will help here too. Then bolt the vortex finder to the inlet section and gradually tighten each screw equally around the diameter of the cone. Now check the inlet liner to make sure it's firmly seated in the inlet section. Then position the vortex finder and inlet assembly on top of the cone. Make sure the inlet connection is at a 180 degree angle from the Demco trademark on the front of the cone. Then align the mounting holes and bolt the assembly to the cone. On this 4H cone, lock washers are also used. They are not used in the other cones. The cone is now assembled ready to attach the orifice control. Dimco's orifice plate, which controls the discharge of solids, locks firmly into place at the base of the cone. Unlike some competitive designs, it is not vulnerable to vibration and adjusts by simply removing an indexing pin and turning the plate to a new opening position. You do not have to disassemble the cone or substitute any parts, just turn the plate. The only repair you'll occasionally encounter on the orifice assembly is replacement of this control plate. To remove the plate, simply pull out the lock pin and this one bolt. While the orifice control is disassembled, you should also inspect and replace the O-ring seal under the plate if necessary. To attach the orifice control to the cone, first slip the assembly over the tip of the cone liner and secure it to the cone flange with these bolts lock washers, and nuts. The handle must be positioned at 180 degrees from the inlet at the top of the cone assembly. The indexing pin and chain are connected to and installed with this first bolt. The final step is to rotate the orifice plate to make sure it fits snugly against the adapter and base of the cone liner. 
There should be a slight pressure as you move the plate from one position to the next. Otherwise, the O-ring will not provide a complete seal. This same orifice control is used on all cones up through eight inches. Larger cones use a diaphragm valve. The principal design difference in cones larger than eight inches is that the cone body is in two sections. The cone liner is also in two sections, which allows you to replace the upper liner or the lower liner without having to disassemble the entire cone and replace a full liner. In the lower cone, where abrasion and wear is greatest, the liner is made of tough urethane. Like all cones, these larger cones also have the tattletale warning holes in both the upper and lower sections of the cone. Disassembly of these larger cones is identical to the smaller one-piece cones. The only other difference is the use of a diaphragm valve rather than an orifice control. If it should ever be necessary to replace the diaphragm valve, simply unscrew it from the adapter. To disassemble the cone, once again, you first remove the inlet assembly by removing these bolts. Then remove the retainer from the vortex finder and slide the vortex flange out of the vortex finder. The inlet liner and upper cone liner can now be inspected and replaced if necessary. Now separate the two sections of the cone by unscrewing these bolts. Then inspect and replace the lower liner if necessary. Reassemble in just the reverse sequence, beginning with installation of the cone liners. First, the lower section. Then, the upper section. Make sure the liners are properly seated in the mating flanges. The inlet liner installs in the inlet section exactly the same as it does in the four inch cone. The only major difference from the four inch cone is in the vortex reassembly. After the liner is installed, this vortex tube is inserted from the inside of the inlet assembly. Slip the vortex flange, the small end first, down over the protruding end of the vortex finder and slide it into the counter bore on the top of the inlet section, flush with the top. Then install the retainer in the groove on the top of the vortex finder. The cone is now ready for service. There is virtually no maintenance required except for occasionally flushing the cones with water or steam. The liners can be quickly replaced as you've seen by simply removing the cone from the inlet section, removing the old liner and replacing the new one. In this larger cone, you of course must also separate the two sections of the cone. Occasionally, a large hunk of solid or some foreign object will lodge in the cone apex. It can happen with any size cone. This can usually be detected by the absence of any discharge. Sometimes the plug can be dislodged simply by shoving a metal rod into the cone through the apex. If this fails, then it will be necessary to shut down the system, disassemble the lower cone and remove the plug object. We, of course, expect and hope that you will have long and trouble-free service from your Demco desilters and desanders. If you should have any problems, you can always refer back to this videotape presentation or to the Demco centrifugal separator catalog, which contains complete descriptions of the various cones and accessories, plus assembly and disassembly procedures. Thank you.